guys, a good, good turnout here. How you guys doing? You having a good show? Sweet. Well, I gotta want to thank you guys for coming out to the panel. I really appreciate you guys coming. Uh, I know I'm like the toy guy at the video game show, so sometimes that's a little strange. So I appreciate you guys coming out. This is gonna be awesome. Um, you guys familiar with what I do? Everybody in here familiar with what I do? So if you're not familiar with what I do, I love toys. That's all you need to know about me. I'm a toy collector, toy reviewer, toy reporter, in the industry for going on eight years now I've been doing this, uh, which is insane to me. But uh, it's something that I'm very passionate about, something that I love, and something that I wanted to share with you guys here today. Um, I put together like a fun little slideshow and kind of a presentation I'm gonna go through today. If any of you guys have followed me for a long time, some of this might be a little familiar to you, um, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because it's fun. I do a lot of toy reviews from modern era, from the retro era. Um, I do a lot of modern stuff these days because it keeps me so busy, but I've always got a love for the toys from the 80s and the 90s that I grew up with. So today I want to do a cool little panel that basically talks about five of my favorite obscure toy lines from the 80s and early 90s. So everybody knows things like Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Masters of the Universe, and Ninja Turtles, right? Everybody remembers these toy lines, but there's, there are so many weirdo, short-lived toy lines, especially in the 80s, that have always been some of my favorites just because they're so strange and they're so weird. And, and it always has been something that's drawn me to them because I sit there and I look at these weird toys and I'm just like, who thought of this? How did this even come about? This is the weirdest thing ever. So that is what we're gonna talk about today. And I got fun videos, so here we go. I include the commercials for some of these toy lines just to kind of give you guys a feel for how they were promoting them. Uh, so I'm gonna kick things off with Army Ants, which is this really weird toy line from Hasbro from 1987. And the whole concept between this toy line was red ants versus black ants, but they were actually colored like orange and blue in the figures. But it was a red versus black kind of storyline. And it was just these really weird minifigures, and they had these awesome little sculpts uh, of them just like these, they were all like little military guys. Like they were actual, actually in an army doing battle with each other. Um, but just some of the fun little designs on them have always really stood out to me. And the thing that I think a lot of people remember about these, does any, did anybody have army ants in here? What's the thing that you remember about army ants? I mean, I always remember that they were kind of goofy. Yeah. The, the bucks are squishy. That's what I was looking for. They had the weird squishy little uh, like abdomen pieces on the end, and the red ones. Yeah, and you could pop them off, and for whatever reason, like that's something that I always did. Like I popped them off and interchanged them for some reason. Um, but it's funny because like the packaging even promoted the fact that they had squishy butts. So that was like an action feature on these things. The butts were squishy. So weird. Um, but you know, you got these crazy guys like the, the guy with the big giant brain coming through the top there. I mean, what's up with that? That's so weird. And you got a little scuba guy. I love the blue ant down there in the middle. He's got like a TNT stick in his mouth. He's holding a bundle of TNT. He's got bombs all strapped to him. Like, is he like a suicide bomber ant? So I, don't, I don't know what's going on with this guy. But I don't know. This line was just so, so crazy. There's some close up shots for you guys so you can see it a little better. I like the little Rambo ant down there in the middle. It's got the bandana and the little spear and everything that he's holding. Um, but see, because of those removable butts on there, a lot of times when you find these in the wild, they're missing those. So like half of mine don't even have them, which is kind of a shame. I actually had to pop some of them off and interchange them to take good pictures for you guys. But um, it's weird because they, they came in like three packs or, or uh, I think it was eight packs. Is what they had. Um, so you can get them in big bundles at a time. They were meant to be like army building kind of toys and a bunch of them. Um, but they're a little bit harder to come by these days. I don't see these very often. And when I do see them, it's always one of those like, oh, cool, army ants. It gets a little exciting when you find them out in the wild. But it's really fun. I love the concept. Red ants versus black ants. Such a simple, such a weird idea. And it makes for some fun toys. The name is Max. I'm a skater blader. One slice for me and it's... See you later. Chester is my name, and I like food. I like to squeeze bad guys with my wrestling moves. My name is Angus. Gus to my pals. I'll make anything into an arsenal. Cornelius is my name. Samurai's my thing. Fight like a warrior. Sing like the king. They call me Cliff, and I like to climb. Put the drop on bad dudes anytime. We're the Stone Protectors. A 
our stones of power glow. <laughs> All right, stone protectors from Ace Novelty Company in 1992. Every toy that came out in this era was trying to be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was a huge, huge thing. It was very popular, so we saw lots of copycats. This happens to be one of my favorite copycats because it's so bizarre. They decided to take the idea of a troll doll and mash it with Ninja Turtles, and this is what we got. Weird, muscular troll dolls. So I brought my favorite oh. lunch here with you guys so you can see what he looks like. Um, the, the gimmick with these, of course, was the stone in their chest. They were the stone protectors. The storyline was something silly, like they all got these powerful stones that, from space, which is what transformed them into these weird trolls. Yeah, you know, we need a storyline like that, I guess. But the action feature was with those stones, where when you flick the arm, it flashed. It's got that cool little, like, little flint type effect, which they don't really include in toys anymore because I think it's a very unsafe action feature, actually. Um, but a lot of toys have like the sparking in the flint kind of action feature back in the 80s and the early 90s. So. Uh, but this guy, I mean, like seriously, like they're trying to be like Ninja Turtles, but they also remind me a lot of like He-Man figures, especially this guy, because they're kind of in that five and a half inch scale. They got the squat legs and the muscular builds. Just really bizarre. And of course, they got the troll there. This guy's got a mohawk, I love it. And he's a pro wrestler. How weird is that? Pro wrestling troll with glowing stone in the chest. I mean, how can you not love something so weird? It's the best. So there's, there was all kinds of guys, and you saw them in the, the commercial there, and they all kind of had their own thing. Um, you know, we got the pro wrestler, you got like the cliff climbing guy, or this is the uh, sports guy, actually. So he's got like the roller blades on and stuff. And then, you got the, the guy over here is the cliff climber. He comes with weird weapons too, like a plunger. You know, so they, they were definitely going for that weird factor, just like Ninja Turtles, with all the wacky turtles. The ugly guy is what the villains look like, and they actually were really, I like those guys a lot, because they got the weird alien kind of thing going, and bright skin colors. Just really, really strange stuff. And to really kind of bring it back to that whole trying to be Ninja Turtles thing, even like the few vehicles and stuff they came out with, Totally looks like they could have fit right in with the Ninja Turtles toy line. Uh, this is a barbecue grill with guns on the side. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And it came with a little rubber piece of steak that would sit on the grill and you would push a button and it would throw the steak. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, it totally sounds like something the turtles would be doing, but with pizza instead, right? So, really bizarre toy line. Um, really kind of an inexpensive toy line. It's something that you want to they're pretty easy to come by, except for the later stuff, which is pretty typical of toy lines. The later stuff is, didn't get quite as wide as of a release, but they're really fun and really weird. And if you like stuff like Turtles and E-Man, these almost fit right in with those. They're really cool. Evil viruses are attacking the world's computers, and the computer warriors have been generated to stop them. A soccer trophy changes into an evil techno tank, forcing the computer warriors down. Hiding in a Pepsi can, the computer warriors fight back and deliver a direct hit. But the viruses keep coming, so the computer warriors convert a clock into a digital laser blaster and wipe out the virus air attack. Yeah! Computer warriors, expect the unexpected. Each sold separately. Computer and pencil sharpener available fall 1990, only from Mattel. From Mattel. The Computer Warriors from Mattel, 1990. This is a really crazy but awesome, awesome toy line. I love this line. I've always loved this line. I had a bunch of these when I was a kid and thought they were amazing. They did not last very long. These things hit stores and like immediately went to those accounts. Um, so you saw some of the cool, crazy stuff in the, in the commercial there, like the Pepsi can. Yes. The Pepsi can is, what? Well, that's so weird that they got Pepsi to like uh, sign off on something like this. The idea behind this toy line was that they are, it's a very Tron-like storyline. They're computer viruses who have escaped from the computer. Well, the bad guy viruses escaped from the computer, so the good guy viruses followed them out to stop them. And in the process, they have turned household items into vehicles and bases. So that's the principle behind it. So the whole gimmick of the toy line is that every single item that you buy is supposed to be a real working 
household item of some sort, or at least look like it, and then it opens up and it turns into stuff. So like the Pepsi can looks like a real Pepsi can, it's about the size of a real Pepsi can, it folds open and reveals like a little helicopter type thing. But they had stuff like, um, the, the a clock has an actual digital clock on it that you can set and use, and it had an alarm, and it opened up into a little place set. Um, the pencil sharpener was a real pencil sharpener, just, you know, like an electric pencil sharpener, but still, it could sharpen your pencil if you want. And then there was, like, the flashlight. I brought the flashlight with me. Wow. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work anymore. I'm sure they use the cheapest electronics they could with it. But when you bought these brand new, you could actually put two AA batteries in here, and you could use this as a flashlight. But then the whole thing converts into, like, this crazy, like, little rocket ship thing. Let's open up the side. Pull up the wing. It's just like that. This is, this is really all it does. I mean, it's super simplistic. Turns into this crazy little rocket ship, and then you got the little, little bitty guys, which I really like, and the backs of them look like computer chips or like motherboards, which I always thought was really cool. And then you just put the little guy in the rocket ship. There you go. Flashlight into a rocket ship. <laughs> Real simple, real weird, but you know, I just thought they were a lot of fun. And the little figures, I think, are what really stands out in these, especially since they're small. So I always thought little tiny figures like this were cool. They kind of fit right in with like masks, if anybody remembers mask figures or something like that. They're a lot, right around the same scale, very cool, you know, basic articulation, but they're really fun designs. Um, I got some good close ups for you. So you can see the back of them, how uh, they kind of look like the inside of the computer board or something like that. They all have that. And then you know you got stuff like the little flashlight there, some close-up pictures of it, and opening up, turning into a little rocket ship. So just real fun, real wacky designs. Didn't last long, didn't catch on, but I liked them. I thought they were cool. I had the soccer ball one as a kid. It's the one I specifically remember. It's supposed to be like a soccer ball trophy, but it just looks like a soccer ball. But it's called a soccer ball trophy. And then it opened up into like this radar dish cannon with a little guy inside. It's really cool. so. Do you guys recognize any of this stuff so far? Is this yes. all the planning to you? Do you recognize it? Yeah, you've seen probably Yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. have some of those trolls. You had some of the, the snow protectors? I still have them. Yeah? yeah. Awesome. So, awesome. I had something like the snow protectors, but it could be a little So they, yeah, we'll jump back to that real quick. Uh, the troll thing, they did that multiple times. There were, Hasbro did a line called battle trolls. That was yeah. yeah. Which were like a little bigger and they were beefier. Yeah. So like they weren't, they were a little bit bigger than these. But yeah, the, the troll fat was strange. Man. They, they tried to shove trolls down everybody's throats. Yeah, it was weird. Control their appearance, but no force in the universe can contain the power and the fury of Rock Lord. Shaking, quaking, crashing, breaking, Rock Lord, powerful living rock. He's so separately new from Tonka. <laughs> <laughs> you anybody remember Rock Lord? Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So, uh, Transformers were big, right? They turned into like fire trucks and airplanes and tanks. That's pretty cool, right? These guys turn into rocks! <laughs> How awesome is that? <laughs> so this is actually part of the GoBots toy line. Actually, it's a spinoff of GoBots. In fact, if any of you guys watched any of the GoBots cartoon as a kid, there was a movie called uh, it was a Rock Lords movie. It was like a GoBots Rock Lords movie. So these guys actually appeared in animation one time. Uh, they were released in 87 in the U.S. by Tonka, but released in Japan by Bandai, because they were part of the GoBots line. And um, as a kid, I'll tell you, I, I collect, I love rocks, I love gemstones. I was that kid. I, I wanted to like grow up and like do geology and stuff, because when I was a kid, I thought rocks were cool. So these weird things appealed to me as a kid, and it's something that I still love to this day. I, I brought a few of them with me here. Uh, this one specifically is everybody's favorite because he's real shiny. This is Slimestone. 
And uh, this one, Boulder, was always my favorite. He's like the leader of the, the good team here. Uh, but the packaging was actually really cool because we got like little mini comics and everything. You can see some of the character names there. I love that. You got Crackpot, Pulver Eyes, Stone Heart, Brimstone, Marbles. <laughs> good stuff. Um, so yeah, the, the whole idea was that they, they rolled up into little rocks, just like that. But they actually, I, I, I gotta give them credit because I thought the, the styling was pretty cool. They used like a really neat swirly, like marbleized look in the plastic and everything, so they stood out. And then of course they, they came out with some of the back metalized, real shiny guys there too. And then they folded open into these crazy looking little robots here. Transformations are very basic, however, more complicated than GoBots actually. If you guys remember GoBots, they were very, very simplistic. I feel like these guys work a little bit better. Like they, they make these really cool looking guys there just like that. So those were your good rocks. These are your evil rocks right here. Um, some of the rock uh, shapes are stretching it a little bit, I feel. I mean, you know, <laughs> Boulder is like my, I like the round ones, but some of these real blocky square ones look a little strange, of course. But that's what your villains look like. This guy up over here too. But transforms, just kind of open the legs, pull the arms down, there's the head. This is a little short guy, but he's a lot of fun. Um, but it's really cool. I actually really like the sculpts on these. I really do. It's a really bizarre toy line, but you can see they put a lot of effort, actually, especially into the, the robot designs on the characters. I mean, I know they just turn into rocks, but when you get them in like their actual robot modes, I think those are really cool. I like those quite a bit. Um, so a lot of people always, you know, kind of go bots get made fun of a lot, right? They're like the, the Kmart version of Transformers, everybody always says. But then I always kind of say, well, what about go bots? Where do they fit? Or rock lords? Where do they fit into that mix? Because I like these better than straight up regular go bots. I think they're really cool. Um, as the line went on, they even started incorporating crazy action features and stuff. So like. Uh, the yellow guy there on the left has this like round rock in his stomach when he pressed a button it launched it out. It was attached to a little string so he wouldn't lose it, but it would shoot it out. And then the guy on the right is really cool because his right arm is like a little grappling hook. So uh, it, it's articulated so it can clip onto something and then it's got a string in it so you can actually pull him down on the string and then you push a button and he'd shoot back up the string. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. So they really started working in some neat little action features towards the end. But, um, you know, I kind of talked about how some of them were stretching it a little bit with their rock formations. I, I specifically think our little shock rock guy here uh, is pushing a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a rock. Nothing to see here. He's not really a robot or anything. Like, you still see his face. I mean, look at this. Um, and then my favorite stuff from the line, because I have a, a, a bit of a... A love for things that are like translucent and shiny and sparkly. I don't know. I guess that's the kind of stuff I always liked as a kid. But towards the end, they came out with the Jewel Lords, which were supposed to be gemstone type characters. So they were shiny and clear and really pretty. But we got uh, these two here, which I really like. And there's a blue one too. Um, but I thought they were really cool. And they even incorporated beasts into this line, which are bigger than the other ones. You got this awesome like pterodactyl type guy and this rhinoceros guy. Um, which were really cool. So just overall, I thought this was a fun toy line. I really do. I still love this one quite a bit. Um, they're a little bit harder to come by, especially that later stuff, like the action feature guys and the beasts. They, you don't see them quite as often at toy shows, but these are some of my favorite things to find randomly out in the wild. Yo, Gregory, you want this? You'll never cut the mustard, mean winner! <laughs> Joey's playing with his food again, Mom. Joey's playing with his food again, Mom. Man, I love these old commercials. The Food Fighters. 1989 Mattel. This might be one of the weirdest toy lines I have ever seen made. I want to know what the board <laughs> meeting was like when they came up with this toy line. A lot of drinking. Yeah, yeah. A lot of like, well, guys, He-Man is done. <laughs> G.I. Joe is really popular right now. We need something that's like that, but different. 
Food fight? What? How do you come up with food fighters? Kids like throwing food in cafeterias, right? Yeah. Let's put those guys in military uniforms. So that's the idea. I mean, like, the, the whole marketing campaign around this was about, like, food fights, fighting in the cafeteria, playing with your food. It's a weird toy line, but I love it so much because the designs of these characters are just... They're so wonderful. Like, the, the details that they put into these sculpts are just amazing to me, that they, they put so much effort into something so weird. Um, the french fries are my absolute favorite. This is Fat Frenchie. This is Nate. I got him right up here. So you can see these tiny little guys. Uh, they were really cool because they got these buff muscular arms just jutting out of the sides of their bodies. They got the combat boots at the bottom. They're all wearing little military helmets. They all come with little backpacks that are removable. Um, you can tell the difference between the good guys and the bad guys by the colors of their gear. So all the bad guys had black, and all the good guys had the military cream. Here's Private Pizza. Oh Private Pizza is kind of amazing, because he's got a pepperoni eye patch. <laughs> Which is just amazing. I mean, this is so, so weird. So yeah, this is Burger Deer General right here. He's Burger Deer the good guys. <laughs> Look at the ketchup and the like cheese squirting out of his mouth. What is the green? Yeah. What is that? The green? Backpack. I think that's just his backpack sticking yeah, off the back. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, what is and you can see some of the other good guys there, like the donut. I think Major Munch was the donut's name. Um, yeah, Private Pizza. There's Private Pizza. See his eye patch made of pepperoni. That's <laughs> <laughs> so good. The chicken leg, the drumstick. How good is that? There's a mean wiener, is the villain. <laughs> He's the leader of the bad guy, the bad guy, the battalion. And then yeah, you got Fat Frenchie and Sergeant Stacks, I believe, is the. Yeah, Ch uh, Chip, I think Chip the Ripper was the cookie's name. Yeah. And Taco Terror is the taco. <laughs> Who's kind of amazing, by the way. I love the taco. Um, but this line, like, it's amazing because uh, they really only had the initial wave of figures, and then they released them all again in different colors. So like they re-released the donut with pink icing instead of chocolate icing, and they released the ice cream as orange ice cream instead of chocolate ice cream. So they kind of, they just released the same guys in different colors, but it's amazing to me that they even got as far as releasing vehicles for this line. And you saw the one in the commercial, which is my favorite, it's the combat carton. It's an egg carton that they converted into like a military tank, and you can see it's got a giant bottle of ketchup on top, which is their cannon, and you can position a guy up there on the top to, to blast off of the ketchup, it's amazing. And it, you can open it up and stuff a bunch of the figures on the inside, so just a really, really weird, really bizarre toy line, and I love it, so very cool. So, any of you guys have any of this stuff, or remember any of this stuff out there? Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's the weird stuff like this I find so fun to collect nowadays especially because, you know, we all, a lot of us grew up playing with a lot of the, the mainstream stuff, and so we're still fans of things like, like I particularly am a huge fan of Ninja Turtles and E-Man, and so I, I still actively collect all of that stuff, and it's a lot of the stuff I had from when I was a kid. So when I'm going out now and I'm, I'm hitting up toy shows and, and flea markets and stuff like that, I find myself getting more of a thrill out of discovering the weird stuff like this that I might have missed as a kid or maybe only vaguely remember because it's kind of like I'm, um, you know, learning something new or experiencing this stuff for the first time rather than getting the same stuff over and over again. So this is kind of where my, my biggest thrill really comes from still. Like when I, I need to remember why I'm a fan of toys, I go find weird things like private pizza and then I'm like, oh yeah. This stuff is strange, and that's why I love it so much. Because somebody came up with this. That's what blows my mind. Somebody, this came out of somebody's brain and became a toy, but it's, it's super, super cool. Well, I figured I'd open up. Uh, if there was any kind of Q&A, any questions you guys want to ask, any topic-type suggestions, I'd be happy to do that. What do you think of, like, muscle? Muscle. Yeah, it it's like the little muscle man. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was great stuff. I love the muscle figures. And those were big in Japan, of course, as well. They were the Kanukuman. Um, and then Mattel brought them over here as muscle men. You guys remember those? Mattel released them here, the little pink wrestler guys, very strange looking. Uh, they came in a garbage can here in, in the U.S. And then it was chock filled with those things. Uh, I like those quite a bit. I had a ton of them as a kid. And uh, it's really cool to see, I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff that they've been doing with it lately, but 
um, companies like Super 7, which is oh, kind of like making like their own version. Yeah, well they've got the license to do like licensed muscle stuff. And what they're doing though is they're doing like licensed properties as muscle figures. So they released the line of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Muscle Man just this past year. Uh, which are really cool. So they're little pink Keshi figures of He-Man and Skeletor and all these guys, but they look like they came right out of the old muscle line. And at Toy Fair, they show that they're going to be doing muscle men figures of Mega Man characters and Street Fighter characters. Yeah, so they're doing all kinds of stuff in the muscle men style. And they come in packages with the old muscle logo on them and everything. They're pretty amazing. So you should definitely look into it. I go with, yeah. Yeah, check them out. I reviewed the Masters one, so check out that video. <laughs> yeah, back there. I, I've always been interested. Uh, when I was a kid, I got into the Mighty Max figure. Mighty yeah. Max. And, and like the small little, um, like I, you know, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but I got the Death Star and had the little tiny. Like the little thing. action fleet stuff yeah, that like opened I, up. All, so you like all of like the little compact kind of things. Did you ever have any like the Ninja Turtles ones? They had like the Mini Mutants. They no, did that kind I did have too. an X Men one. Yep, they were like the little square X Men ones that yes. opened up. Yeah, yeah. anybody remember Mighty Max or any of that stuff? Polly Pocket. Yeah, Polly Pocket. My sister loved Polly Pocket. Um, I had a bunch of the Mighty Maxes as a kid. I thought those were great. My favorite one was always the Snake that opened up into like a Pharaoh's tomb. Oh man, those were so cool, right? The detail that they worked into those tiny little things was always mind blowing. Even when I was a kid, I was just like so amazed. You would sit there and study everything that was worked in to the sculpt of those things. Yeah, those were fantastic. I love those. Yes. What's my favorite Ninja Turtles figure? Uh, from the vintage line, I would definitely say Mutagen Man is my favorite Ninja Turtles figure. You guys remember Mutagen Man? He was this really weird looking, he, the, the body of him was clear, and you can see like, <laughs> it just had like these pink insides basically, like, like, like there was floating eyeballs and like his guts and everything was showing, right? You could fill his body with water, and then he came with little like bones and slices of pizza and things that dump in there so it looked like they were floating around inside the figure. Really, really weird and bizarre, and I loved it of course, because I loved the weird slimy type characters. Him and Muck Man. I love Muck Man a lot too. Everybody remember Muck Man? He's one of my favorites as well. Ninja Trolls are so, I love Ninja Trolls. The whole toy line is great. Yes? What are some of your Holy Grails that you look for when you go in? Holy Grails, man, I'll tell you, it's getting, I've, I've actually picked up a lot of my Holy Grails this last year, which has been kind of amazing. Uh, a lot of them uh, centered around the Vintage Masters of the Universe line because that's always been like one of my primary collections to focus on. And there were figures uh, in that vintage line that were only released overseas at the end of the line, which were the two giants, Titus and Megator. Uh, they're just these giant figures for Masters of the Universe. And then there was Laser Power He-Man and Laser Light Skeletor, which were variants of the two main figures that were never released in the US. But they had uh, light-up action features, so Skeletor's eyes and his Havoc staff would glow red, and He-Man's power sword would light up yellow. Really cool, really rare, because they were only released like over in Italy, I think, and some places over in Europe. Um, so those were always things that I always looked out for, but every time I did come across them, which was rare, but every time I did come across them, I mean, Skeletor alone would sell for like $850 for a figure. You know, they are very, very hard to find. But just this past year, uh, I got the laser figures, He-Man and Skeletor, just recently. I got them in an amazing trade, and I couldn't believe it, and it's like mind-blowing to me. So that's that that was a big score for me. I'm always still looking for some of the rare Ninja Turtle stuff, too. Um, Scratch is a common one that you guys might have heard of. He's like a weird cat wearing like a prison suit. It's a prison stripes. Really strange looking figure, released at the tail end of the Ninja Turtles line, and is known to be like one of the most obscure figures in that whole line. So anytime I come across him at a convention, he's like $600. And I, I just can't pay that much money for one loose action figure, that's too much. So that's the kind of thing you always hope to find while you're digging through a bin of toys. And a, you know, you never know what you're gonna find in those things. So that's that's always in the back of my head. Do those bins, so, you know, $2 for any toy in this bin. Okay, here we go. You know, you never know. You might find something fun. So, oh, in the back. Uh, my son, he's six, and he loves watching your YouTube channel. That's awesome. He started to 
collect anything you could, you know, any words of wisdom for him collecting? Or... Oh, okay. So, like, uh, just he's into, like, anything? He, he loves turtles. Turtles? I, I love turtles. He loves turtles. He has all my turtles. Oh, that's great. I'd say he's probably up to, like, 150 figures. Oh, that's so awesome. So, are you just looking for advice for, like, finding the stuff? Or, like... What to do with it? What to do with it? He tends to set it up uh -huh. and look at it. And when I was a kid, I'd set it up and I'd play with it and I'd crash things around. You're I'd right. It. But it wants it on the yeah. He's a collector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 well. What, what do you do? Do you play with your um, I so <laughs> I don't really play with my toys much, but I do have a two-year-old son, and I really started playing a lot with him, which is amazing. And I do, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I encourage playing with toys a lot, especially the kids. Um, and that's one of the things that I, I kind of focus on a lot in my reviews too. Like when I'm reviewing a lot of modern-day stuff, especially if it's like a toy that's aimed more to kid that collectors happen to like. One of the things I kind of judge on it is, you know what, a kid would like this. A kid would play with this. I think this looks like a fun toy. Maybe collectors are mad that it has an action feature, but kids love action features. They really, really do. You know how I know? I have a two-year-old that geeks out when he sees like a tongue jut out of a tongue lasher's mouth. He loves that kind of stuff. So um, I'm, always a big, I, I'm always a big proponent of, it's a toy, it's meant to be played with. Kids should be playing with. Um, but, you know, I, I, a lot of my stuff, like, uh, I've actually been letting my son play with a lot of my collection stuff lately. Like, if he comes down and he sees something and it catches his eye, I'm like, yeah, you can play with that body, and I pull it down. Unless it's something that is super rare or that I paid a lot of money for or that I'm worried he's going to break. So there's limitations, of course. But, um, you know, yeah, I always kind of encourage it, especially with my kid and especially with everybody that I'm talking to in my videos. But, um, I mean, if, if he wants to just set him up with a slam, I mean, that's cool too, right? Does he like organize them specifically? Absolutely. We've oh, got that's cool. The, the new turtle play set right in the living room with every service is covered. With Does he set people. up like battles with them? Oh, yeah. Oh, see, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that's, I think that's just his way of playing with them. I think, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's great. I try to get him to change it like once a week. Like, all right, totally. What's going on this episode? I, I, I think that what's going on this episode, I like it. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, because even with my collection, um, you know, I can't display everything, it's, I have too much stuff. <laughs> so I can't display everything at once, so I, I do kind of do go in waves sometimes. I'll, I'll get to a point where I'm like, you know, I think I'm tired of looking at this specific display. Maybe I'll put it away and I'll get something else out for a while and put something else up on the shelf. So I always tell people, you know, rotate it a little bit. It keeps it fresh. It lets you kind of rediscover the stuff that you have. Um, maybe it lets you decide if it's something that you really need to keep or not, you know, because then you can purge some stuff and go buy new toys, you know. Um, so yeah, I think rearranging the display is totally cool. I, I think encourage them to do that more often. I think that'd be great. Cool. All right, we'll go up here. How do you display that? How do you store this stuff in having to display? How do I store it? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I get asked all the time why I haven't done a recent video of my toy room. <laughs> That's why. I have so many piles of stuff. It's bad. Um, I have a lot of Rubbermaid totes, and I try to keep things. Yeah, and. I, I, I've, I've also heard from some people that putting them in like baggies isn't necessarily good for them for extended storage, but that's what I tend to do. I usually put them in baggies so I don't lose the weapons and stuff, and then I put them in these Rubbermaid totes, um, and that seems to work the best for me, so that's kind of how I store things when I'm not displaying it. Especially works good with package stuff, too. You can usually kind of stagger, stack it, and keep things in the package, put them in the Rubbermaid totes. That way, if there's a flood or something in a basement, which is the worst thing, the rubber made toes will protect them. So, uh, that was a question. We'll go with Ashley. Um, just out of curiosity, do you collect like, with any of the fast food toy lines? Like, any yes. <laughs> if, if so, what, what would you say is like, the weirdest of the sets that they came across throughout the whole fast food? McDonald's changes. It was a line, and I almost included it in my list today because it's one of my favorite. It's definitely my favorite fast food food. Do you guys remember those? You know what I'm talking about? They were McDonald food that turned into robots. So there was chicken nuggets and a cheeseburger and a drink and French fries, and they transformed into robots because it was out of the height of the Transformers popularity. Those are awesome. And then they did a follow-up to that where they turned into dinosaurs. 
<laughs> and then the dinosaur line too. Yeah, so that that yeah, definitely that's my favorite. Career. I I've seen a few of your videos and you have a lot of stuff. How do you decide when is to, when it's time to you know get rid of certain things? Because yeah. you go through so much trouble collecting and acquiring some of this stuff and you want to hold on to it, but at some point you realize you got to let some of it go. Absolutely. Either, either because your drawers are overflowing or just because you want to get something else and you got no other option. Absolutely. Yeah, that's always a tough thing. Um, with my collection, I have a few main things that I collect that I've basically forbidden myself to get rid of because I know I'll regret it. Um, my Masters of the Universe collection and my Ninja Turtles collection are my two top priorities. And I've spent so much time over the years collecting things for that that I don't think I will be, those will, if I ever have to sell all my stuff, those will absolutely be the things I hold on to the longest because uh, there's just too much there. I've invested too much time and, and you know love into it. Um, but there's a lot of random things that I buy. And you do kind of get to a point sometimes where you're going through and you're just looking at all this stuff and you're just like, do I really need all this stuff? So what I usually do is I start to evaluate kind of my all the impulse buys that I had. And I look at the stuff that I bought because I thought it was cool at the time. And you kind of decide, have I gotten all the joy out of this that I could? Am I going to feel bad if I get rid of this? If you have any doubt about it, I usually try to hold off on selling it. Because if, if you're feeling immediately like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to get rid of this, you're probably going to regret getting rid of it at some point. But if it's something that you pick up and you're like, oh, this is cool, but you know, maybe I don't actually need this anymore. That that's, seems to be the best route for me. I just kind of go through everything, especially the stuff I picked up on Impulse or something I thought was cool at the time. Just decide if I'm done with it, if I got my joy out of it. Maybe it's time to move it on to somebody else that might have Yeah, I, I get the feeling. I do the same thing with DVDs and Blu-rays. Absolutely, yeah. That, and that really goes for anything that you're collecting, honestly. Not just toys. Video games, too. You know, and all that stuff. Crazy. Um, I wonder if you had any resources for uh, like tracking distribution. What I do is I collect the Playmates Turtles, and I never know when they're going to be rolling out. Man, it's that's... So Shoot. I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. Um, a lot of times I find out about the new turtle stuff when people are like tweeting me saying, I just found so and so at, at Target. And I'm like, great, now I have to go stop at Target for the next week so that I can get this figure to review it. <laughs> um, it is weird, especially with a lot of the, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of different too, because with a lot of the collector stuff, they do have like specific release dates. It's scarcity, but it's annoying to be general. Exactly, yeah, and then that's the other thing. Um, toys these days don't really work the way toys did when we were kids. When we were kids, we could walk into a store and pretty much just buy anything whenever we wanted to for the most part. Um, this day and age, you know, they release a wave of toys, and when the wave of toys sells out, that's it, it's gone. And then, you know, usually they don't always refresh them or bring them back. And that's just the way the industry as a whole has changed, and costs are a lot higher these days, so companies don't really make evergreen items anymore, meaning they don't keep producing them. Usually they go through run production run, and once it sells out, they determine at that point if it's worth it for them to go into a second run of it or not. And a lot of times too, um, this day and age, a toy line has to have a company, accompanying a media of some sort in order for retail to even want to carry it. So in the case of something like Ninja Turtles, they have a very successful cartoon series right now. So of course retail wants to have space for Ninja Turtles because it's going to be a money maker. Kids are going to buy it. But when somebody's releasing a line of toys that doesn't necessarily have a toy or a movie tied to it, retail is a lot more hesitant these days to actually bring that into their stores because they don't they don't know if it's going to sell if they don't think that kids are going to know what the stuff is. Times have really changed. It's really weird. They, the 80s were a golden age for toys and weird stuff um, because anybody could just kind of make anything and put it in the stores back then. It. We didn't have to have cartoons for everything. Was there a couple more questions too? I'm gonna answer a couple more for you real quick. Right there. Uh, uh, Dan, have you ever? I know you were saying that um, you know, obviously, GoBots, you know, the great knockoff Kmart uh, you know, Transformers. You, have you ever heard of uh, Mo Motobots? Does that ring a bell? Motobots? No. Yeah, made by MC Toys. They have like a little spring-powered drive you put in the back, and they just kind of flip out with their legs and their arms and a little pop-up really? head. Yeah. I don't think I have seen those. See, yeah, I learn yeah. something new every day. I'm, yeah. I'm not an expert by any means. That's really cool. All right, well, I want to thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys had a great time here at the panel today. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting me.
Thank you guys for joining us. We're going to have a convention. Thank you again.